how did a feather change the course of history? Well, I'll tell you, and along the way, I'll talk about class prejudice, the true father of electricity and electrifying hot pokers, a live chicken, and flying children. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. The real story of electricity begins in 1729 with a man named Stephen Gray. Stephen Gray was born in 1666 in the town of Canterbury to a lower class family of clothing dyers. Gray was fascinated with science and did self-funded research in a wide variety of topics, from telescopes to microscopes to an attempt to capture the Canterbury ghost. Through his work on telescopes, Gray became friends with the royal astronomer, a man named John Flamsteed. King Charles II, you remember the slutty king? He created the position of royal astronomer in 1675 to have a more accurate study of the stars to help with navigation. Unfortunately for Gray and for Flamsteed, Flamsteed and Isaac Newton got in a battle over star maps, after which Isaac Newton blackballed Flamsteed and anyone connected to him. Dying cloth is dangerous and backbreaking work, and all Stephen Gray wanted to do was study science, but because of Newton's animus, he couldn't get published or assistance. His finances actually improved a little bit, in 1713 when Isaac Newton's assistant, Francis Hawksby died, as then Newton hired a new assistant, a French man named John Desalier, to be his new assistant. Desalier succeeded in managing the notoriously prickly Newton as well as Newton's enemies, including Gray and Flamsteed. Finally, in 1719, when Gray was 54 years old, Desalier and Flamsteed managed to get Gray a position at the Charter House. Now, the Charter House was a retirement home for poor soldiers, and Gray was never a soldier. However, he argued that his work on astronomy was for the government, and therefore he was sort of a soldier. Anyway, for the next 10 years, nothing of note came from the Charter House. Then on May 1st, 1729, he made a surprising discovery with a feather. Gray was playing with a tube that had corks in it to keep out the dust, and he wondered if the corks affected the power of the tubes. Gray then charged up the tube and watched if a feather behaved differently if it was released near the center or near the end. To his surprise, the feather released near the end attached to the cork instead of to the glass, even though he had never rubbed the cork. Gray had discovered electric communication. This is important. Before this date, nobody knew electricity could flow at all. Gray quickly extended the experiment to see how far electricity could flow. He placed a small stick in the cork and an ivory ball at the end of the stick and found that the ball could be electrified by rubbing the glass tube without touching the ball at all. Gray then tried a thick twine called pack thread as his, quote, line of communication, end quote, and it worked very well. However, if the twine touched the ground, the experiment stopped working. By draping a length of twine off the highest tower in the Charter House, Gray managed to make feathers attract to a ball of ivory 34 feet away. He then went searching for a higher tower. Luckily for Gray and for science, he had another wealthy friend, this one a man named Granville Wheeler. Wheeler was an amateur scientist and a distant relative of Flamsteed and was happy to take over his large estate to Gray's strange studies. Wheeler thought of conducting electricity long distance by suspending pack thread with silk string. Gray thought that was a great idea as silk is far thinner than pack thread and he hoped would prevent the loss of electric virtue. They threaded twine held up by silk string through Wheeler's hallways and a ballroom with one end of twine connected to a glass tube and the other end to an ivory ball. Rubbing the tube at one end attracted feathers to the ball 765 feet away. Gray and Wheeler became frustrated by how often the silk string would break. Therefore, they decided to replace the silk string with thin metal wire. It was stronger, but it didn't work. They were surprised to find that it wasn't just the thickness that mattered, but what the material was made of. They had discovered that materials could be placed into two categories those that would let electricity flow easily, conductors, and those that would prevent electricity from flowing easily, insulators. On August 5th, 1729, 
Gray noticed that the experiment worked even when the charged glass tube did not even touch the pack thread, but was just placed close to it. The electricity would be induced to move without actually touching. For that reason, this process was called induction, or charging without touching. And of course, Gray was the first person to discover it. Gray and Wheeler spent the next 30 months electrocuting anything they could get their hands on, including an umbrella, a hot poker, a large tablecloth, and a map. Gray wrote that Wheeler even suspended a large chicken upon the tube by its legs and found that the breast of the chick was strongly electrical. They happily found that everything they played with fit neatly into either one of those two categories of insulator or conductor. On April 8, 1730, Gray moved from live chickens to live children. On that day, he took an eight or nine year old boy and suspended him from a wooden structure with silk strings as if he was flying. When Gray placed a charged rod near the boy's feet, little feathers and fluff would be attracted to the boy's hands and head. This was a strange and dramatic demonstration of induction that became a popular parlor trick for years afterwards. Gray's fortunes improved in 1730 when his friend, a man named Cromwell Mortimer, was made of the editor of the Royal Society's magazine. Newton did not object because he had died three years earlier in his sleep, possibly from mercury poisoning. Finally, he could be published, and in January 1731, Gray told the world all he had discovered about electricity. Unfortunately, his success was short-lived, as just a few years later, he fell seriously ill. Mortimer visited Gray on his sickbed, where Gray described his plans for a floating world with electric forces, if God would spare his life a little longer. He died the very next day. Gray had discovered that electricity moved. He discovered conduction, insulation, and induction. He really is the true father of electricity. However, most scientists at the time were interested in the important studies of gravity. They weren't interested in the trivial studies of feathers moving as discovered by some lower class merchant. Luckily, a wealthy French nobleman with the elegantly cumbersome name of Charles Francois de Cisternay de Fay had the Royal Society's papers translated into French and read Gray's report. In the course of just eight months, with the help of little pieces of gold, he managed to make the first rules of electricity, and he was half right. And that story is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, please give it a thumbs up anyway. Why not? Um, also, feel free to ask me any questions and I'll respond to any comment and have a good day.